everyone, welcome. This is Thea Maria Carlson. I'm Executive Director of the Biodynamic Association and I'm here with Stephanie Morningstar who will be a keynote speaker at the 2019 Biodynamic Conference. Welcome, Stephanie. Thank you. Now, a sego seguego, everybody. Thanks for having me. Um, so, could you just start off by telling us a little bit about yourself and your work in the world? Sure. Um, so, uh, let's see. I was born in Buffalo, New York, and I'm now living in Dish with One Spoon Wampum Agreement Territory, which is the um, what we would call the Niagara, Hamilton, Toronto area. They call it the Golden Horseshoe sometimes. Um, and I live up here with my partner, Noel, and my six cats, my three dogs, my one pot belly pig and a snake on a, a large, um, mostly pasture farm, but I have a small herb farm here. And I practice as an herbalist out of Skyworld Apothecary, which is my um, small apothecary. We focus mainly on um, providing medicines free of charge um, to social justice and climate justice activists and actions and frontline actions, as well as working in a collective um, to help with um, making safe space for Black, Indigenous, and people of color at um, in herbal conferences, education, stuff like that. I also um, am the director of an organization called the Northeast Farmers of Color Land Trust. And what that is, is it's a land trust that is um, dedicated to advancing the um, sovereignty, uh, land sovereignty and food sovereignty for farmers of color in the Northeast region. Um, it's a pretty interesting organization that um, just started about 10 months ago through um, Soul Fire Farm who is our fiscal sponsor. And we are um, just in our 10th month of building this organization. And our vision is to advance land and food sovereignty in the Northeast region through permanent and secure land tenure for indigenous, black, Asian, and Latinx, and other land stewards of color who will use the land in a sacred manner that honors our ancestors' dreams for sustainable farming, human habitat, ceremony, native ecosystem restoration, and cultural preservation. So those two things combined are kind of the intersection of my work as an herbalist and a healer and an indigenous person and somebody who's been practicing biodynamics without realizing it for a very long time or actually practicing something that biodynamics is, is somehow linked to for a very long time. Um, and there are just many principles between biodynamics and um, indigenous agriculture, indigenous ways of being, doing, and knowing that intersect. So I, I kind of came into this very naturally. Um, so yeah, that's who I am. That's some of who I am, I guess, at least. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> it's hard to encapsulate it in a few minutes, but that's the wonderful um, picture of your, your, and I love that we get one of your cats in the background. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> My yeah, hopefully everybody her, loves cats. I have too. one cat who slipped into my office who's trying to make a show now, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> You're definitely the main focus of the show. Um, but it's, always, it's always fun to have animals incorporated also. And um, One of my six yeah. cats. <laughs> Um, so yeah, it's wonderful. I love how you're, you're talking about this work that you've been doing for a long time and, and starting to recognize the parallels with biodynamics and that's something, as you know, that we've been um, really working to build connections and relationships and, and mutual understanding and sharing and learning. So I'm, I'm really glad that you're bringing that into this conference. Um, do you want to say anything more about your relationship to biodynamics? Sure. Um, I've been looking into biodynamics for a long time and starting to embody some of the concepts, but I realized a lot of the, um, the work that I was doing as a cultural anthropologist and an ethnobotanist um, was really focused on um, star knowledge. And that's something that I became very passionate about at a very young age and started working um, and learning about indigenous agriculture and Haudenosaunee agriculture through um, many different, you know, local sources um, at Six Nations where my community is located um, and chose to name my apothecary Skyworld Apothecary specifically because of that connection to star, um, the Skyworld and um, star knowledge. So um, what I see that's similar in some respects and where my relationship sort of began with biodynamics was through this idea of what um, is known as the Kapemni pair, 
And what that is, is it's, um, I, I, I wish I could draw a little, you know, I could show it to you on a slide and actually it's going to be in my presentation. So I won't illuminate on it too much, but what it is, is it's a Lakota um, <clears throat> expression of the relationship between humans, sky world and the land. And it, when I learned about this and learned that this is something Lakota people have been doing since time immemorial and seeing that Haudenosaunee people have been also doing this for a very long time and other folks that I've been in, involved with Cree people and um, Anishinaabe and all these different um, indigenous nations. I started realizing that we have this universal connection with this communication between our ancestors and, and the land and how we're sort of held in between, we, we hold space in between those two worlds and we're the ones who sort of receive communication and act those instructions onto the land and then offer back reciprocity to sky world in some way um, through ceremony, through dancing, through, you know, all those different things. So um, to me, that correlation or that parallel with some of the practices of biodynamics was um, what really drew me into this idea of working, um, working alongside a Western expression of our relationship to the stars and to the cosmos and to, um, you know, really looking at everything as a living organism, not, um, not separating ourselves from, from nature or holding ourselves above nature, but also recognizing that we are a part of nature mm -hmm. and um, really being an herb farmer and being a farmer who's a regenerative farmer, focusing on these concepts of biodiversity and the support of biodiversity on our lands and on the occupy the territories that we occupy and, and steward together. So that con that connection between earth and cosmos, I think was how, what, um, that was the catalyst to pique my interest about biodynamics. And then I started learning about all the other aspects of biodynamics that actually really help. I and mean, we have our own planting calendar, the Haud Haudenosaunee planting calendar that's um, very complexly devised and it's connected to our, it's connected to spirit. So, and connected to ceremony and, um, and connected to an, our indigenous knowledge, our inherent Ongohoe knowledge. And to me, seeing that um, scientific understanding of spirit being a part of nature as well, that not only we are a part of nature, but that spirit is a part of nature, meaning spirit is part of us, um, was really important to me. A lot of the work that we do um, at NEFOC, at Northeast Farmers of Color Land Trust, is um, in concert with spirit and through ceremony, especially in building relationships with the indigenous communities in the Northeast. Mm -hmm. um, that isn't in meetings, it isn't in, I mean, it will be in meetings, but um, those relationships are oftentimes built in ceremony. And I think it's really important to focus on, um, for us at least, our indigenous ways of being, doing, knowing that are, are not separate from spirit. So those are some parallels that sort of drew me in and, and, and wanted um, and beckoned me to learn more and to start um, working with other bi biodynamic farmers like Mama Claudia Ford and folks to um, kind of take something that was merely organic and actually invoke spirit again. And I think that's really important. And, and the food that we're eating the medicines that we're taking, um, if we're growing them inside of a fenced boundary, if they're not growing where they choose to grow in, in the rest of nature, um, it's, I think we need to be a little bit more intentional in how we invoke spirit. So um, yeah, that's probably a long rambling response. <laughs> Oh, it's beautiful. Thank you for, um, it's, it's just, I mean, there's, I think there's so much to biodynamics and each conversation we have about this illuminates different threads and connections. And um, so, yeah, it's, the, thank you for sharing all of that. Mm -hmm. um, and I think you touched a bit on the, the theme of this year's conference is cultivating relationships, earth, cosmos, and community. And you, you've already kind of pulled out a few of those threads. Is there anything you want to say more about that theme and, and how you feel that connects to your work and what you're interested in? Sure. Um, I think part of the, the, the biggest part of what we're doing right now, one of the heaviest lifts and one of the most gratifying and rewarding lifts right now for Northeast Farmers of Color is building relationships. And those relationships are looking like, um, you know, working with the indigenous 
the First Nations of the territories around the Northeast. We're, you know, building relationships with many different First Nations in order to be able to understand what their desires are for the, their unceded territories. So, you know, these territories are unceded. They don't have treaty on many of them and are truly what we would consider stolen land. So trying to um, be in right relationship with these First Nations so that we're not replicating colonial harm um, when we're working with a land transfer. Um, that's a big one for us. Um, it's been deeply gratifying to build relationships with our um, Indigenous brothers and sisters and um, Two-Spirit folks out there so that we can really come from a solid core of ethical, meaningful relationship. Um, we're also building relationships with tons of allied and sibling organizations and farmers out there who are um, aligned with our values and um, working, whether it's with Skyworld Apothecary and the collective um, that I work with, or whether it's through Nefolk Land Trust, um, we're, not a we're not a machine. So, you know, we're really, we're, we're looking to do this work in a different way that isn't just mechanically kind of creating, um, you know, acquiring land or um, teaching people about plant medicine or, you know, um, teaching curriculum or something. We're, we're literally working from a place of relationship and a, a colleague of mine said it best during a, a recent consultation that we had with the Wabanaki Confederacy and um, the Indakana Katahdin region. He said that they're moving at the speed of trust. And that's really, I think, what I think is the best plan of action is to move slowly and cautiously and meaningfully and respectfully at the speed of trust. And I think we all have something to offer and we all have a reason for why we're doing this work. And I think um, biodynamics is one of those places where you can really express, um, express spirit in a way that, and express that regenerative connection with the land <clears throat> in a way that you don't see often in farming. So, I think part of it is moving at the speed of trust, even with the land itself, and really listening to that land and listening to the ancestors that um, occupy those lands as well. So there's there's a lot of relationships being built, whether it's with each other, with the ancestors, with the land. Um, it's all a part of this work for us. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's that's so important and something that is, uh, I think, fortunately, coming into more and more people's awareness is you know, oh wow, there's, it's not just like a blank slate of land that I happen to live on or I'm farming, like there's a history here and, yeah. and building a relationship with that and, and understanding what's happened and how people can relate to that moving forward, so. For sure, that's, it's not Tara and Elias. <laughs> 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 We're, we, we know that though. Yeah, yeah. Um, so anything more you want to say about your what you're bringing as a keynote speaker in relationship to the theme? I, you know, you've already shared a little bit, but anything else you want to share on that? Um, well, I, the keynote is our opportunity, Saka and I, our opportunity to show or to illustrate who we are as um, sort of a connected pair in some ways. Um, Saka Iver, who is my co-coordinator for Northeast Farmers of Color um, lives on the other side of our catchment area. So I live in the Buffalo, New York region and he lives in um, the Rhode Island region. So we're, we don't really see each other very often, but we see each other through virtual meetings all the time and have formed a really interesting connection. And Saka is, um, in, in the Haudenosaunee tradition, I'll say we have a, a way of working together um, healers and seers work together. So it's, it's a way of throwing things back and forth to one another. And um, the seers are the people who are working with the stars and who are working with doing readings and, and really working with spirit um, and listening to spirit and then um, and watching the stars and then enacting some sort of prescription or diagnosis from that place. And then the healer is the person who listens to that person and understands what it is that needs to happen and makes the mix and makes the um, makes the prescription and delivers that in a way that um, is asking those medicines or whatever it is the healing modality that's happening to help this person heal. So I think Saka and I have uh, Saka is actually I I don't know if I'm 
outing him in this way, but he's an astrologer. <laughs> so we have this really great connection um, as an herbalist and an astrologer, as well as as co-coordinators. And I think because of those unique ways of seeing the world and, and operating within the world, um, we have had lots of really interesting conversations about biodynamics and star knowledge and how this is all um, somehow included in the work that we're doing. So this is a, an opportunity for me specifically to share about our Haudenosaunee cosmology and the way that we see the land and what, how we see our relationship to the land in relation to the sky and the stars and how that has informed and continues to inform our relationship to the land and each other. And I know Saka is kind of similar, similarly um, looking at it that way, but I can't speak for him, so I'm not going to. <laughs> but it's been really a pleasure to just do this work with him and to have this beautiful flow of um, riffing off of one another and um, you know, organically feeling into this, these things and really being open to spirit and open to um, the stars as, as a strategic planning mechanism <laughs> and things like that. So um, I, I feel like this is the one audience maybe who this will land very well with, I hope, because it's not something that m many people would really take seriously, I think, but to us, we take it very seriously. Um, that being said, really, I would love to illuminate the cosmology of the territory that you're on. So I know that um, we're going to be at Lake George. We're in Haudenosaunee territory. We have Alicia Cook coming and doing an opening. Um, she's going to probably explain a little bit about the Ginyo Hinyo for our traditional Thanksgiving address. And then I'm in my keynote going to be sharing about the Haudenosaunee cosmology and sky woman, or who we would call exploding flower and um, mature flower. And, and these people who are a part of our cosmology that come from Sky World who actually were the first people in our territories and created Turtle Island and created our relationship with the land and how we act upon the land and what we receive and give back to that. So our lessons in reciprocity and um, right relationship are all in those original instructions. So those are really, um, that's what I'm hoping to illuminate a little bit in my presentation or workshop or keynote or whatever you want to call it is that relationship that already exists in these territories um, because those are th these territories are um, a result the the anthropogenic hands on, on the land that have been happening since time immemorial have created the landscape that um, was present at the point of contact so I'm really hoping people come away understanding that we have been here and stewarding the land since time immemorial with those original instructions from our creator. Um, and that um, that is a complex and beautiful relationship that is um, in some ways complementary to biodynamics. So I, I as an indigenous um, herbalist and farmer and agriculturist and all those things, um, and as a director of an organization that's advocating for land access for Black, Indigenous, and other people of color, um, I want to honor our own cosmologies and see how they can complement and work with biodynamics. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, yeah. Anything else you want to share before we close? No, I think I'm good. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you so much. I'm really looking forward to, um, yeah, to seeing you in person at the conference and hearing what you and Saka bring. And I'm hoping to be able to talk to Saka later today. So we'll get his side of the uh, um, conversation as well. So um, yeah, thank you so much. And if anyone needs to learn more about the Biodynamic Conference, biodynamics.com slash conference and hope to see you there. All right. Thank you, Thea. Thank you.